Hello and welcome to another tutorial on live effects. In this video we're talking about color management. Um, let's start with the project settings. There is this button here, color management on or off, and what this button does I will get to in just a bit. For now just remember that this button is there and it's turned off. Alright, let's enter into our project and we have two clips here. Now color management becomes interesting at um, four corner points um, in LiveFX. First one is the clip itself. You need to tell LiveFX what color space and transfer function the image is encoded with. Second is the display. You need to tell LiveFX what color space the connected displays expect. Third is connected fixtures, stage lights. Um, here again, you need to tell LiveFX uh, what color space and transfer function the uh, light at the other end of the cable is set to. And lastly, rendering. What kind of color space and transfer function you want to render to file eventually. So let's start by looking at the clip. I have this clip here. Let's enter the LiveFX tab and go to the media menu. Pause that for a sec. Make this a little bit bigger. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see, there's two drop downs here one for the color space, one for the transfer function, and right now this is set to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Now, looking at this image, we can clearly tell this is a log looking image and certainly not Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. The thing is, the underlying QuickTime file has um, uh, these uh, Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 tags implemented because. QuickTime only reserves a certain number of tags for standardized color spaces and something like ARRI log C and uh, ARRI white gamut um, cannot be put into those tags. So instead ARRI chose to use the Rec 709 tag. However, these dropdowns are there to tell LiveFX, hey, this is not Rec 709, this is actually ARRI white gamut 3 and ARRI log C 3. All right. Now, these two dropdowns here do not trigger a color space conversion or anything. All these do is tell LiveFX what color space and transfer function the clip that we're looking at is in. And these dropdowns are the same here in the media menu as they are, if I swipe to the right, switch to the metadata stack here. This is the exact same setting, just available in a different space. Um, if I exit to the construct, over here I also have the metadata stack where I could potentially change those flags. And if I click on the uh, clip name here, I get these drop downs again in here. And if I want to change these tags for multiple clips at once, I could go to the media browser. Media browser is always your friend whenever you want to do batch operations, apply something to multiple clips at once. And if I go to the gray tab here, there again are these two drop downs. Again, uh, these. Uh, Dropdowns are the exact same thing, just available in different places. All right, so now that we have told LiveFX that this clip is actually in ARRI White Gamut 3 and ARRI Log C3, um, what happens next? Let's go to the Settings menu and to the Monitors menu. In here, LiveFX lists all our um, monitor display outputs, so to speak. Uh, one of them is the interface monitor. And right now they're all set to source, which means there's no color space conversion whatsoever happening. All right, so if I tell LiveFX that my interface monitor here is actually a Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, then you can see the image changes drastically. You can toggle this on and off here with the Mon button. Um, and what happens now is really straightforward. LiveFX looks at the clip, sees it's ARRI White Gamut 3, ARRI Log C3. It compares those tags to the interface monitors tags, Rec 709, Gamma 2.4, and converts from one to the other. Now, if we had an LED processor attached to, uh, let's say, NDI output number one, and that LED processor is configured to receive a signal in Rec 2020 and PQ, then we can set that here. And LiveFX will do the conversion from ARRI White Gamut Log C3 to Rec 2020 PQ just for NDI output number one. And the same obviously applies to any SDI or HDMI output. 
and of course also the dual head output straight from the GPU. All right. Now um, let's quickly jump back to our project settings. Um, the color management on off button here in terms of display color space what this does is if this is disabled set to off upon project creation then these uh, all these drop downs here in the monitors menu will be set to source because no color management we don't want any conversions whatsoever um, if however um, this is enabled upon project creation then it will set um, the corresponding drop downs to sRGB and gamma 2.2 by default um, to ensure that you're getting a somewhat reasonable image out of live effects. Now the thing is turning this on mid project won't change anything. I have now turned this on. I'll enter back into the project and as you can see my drop downs are still the same. They are not changed because nothing you set inside the project settings ever changes anything that already exists and has been set inside the project. Same if I turn this off, enter back into the project, look at my monitors, they haven't changed. This is only something that uh, uh, applies upon project creation, where you set how you want to start, with all this being set to source or sRGB gamma 2.2, all right? Um, there's a second point where uh, the color management on off button comes into play and uh, I'll get to that in just a sec. Back to our log C club. Now as we can tell um, LiveFX is doing a straight conversion from Airy White Gamut and uh, log C3 to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 for our interface monitor here. Um, it's worth noting that this transform happens without any kind of tone mapping applied. Um, and this is important to know because next thing we're going to do is we will load a lookup table onto this shot. Go straight to the LUT menu here, hit load and load a lookup table. That takes the log C uh, content to Rec 709. Apply that and as you can see what we're looking at looks pretty horrible. So what's happening? Well, we're basically having a double conversion right now. Uh, the lookup table is transforming the log shot into Rec 709 and at the same time LiveFX still believes that since the shot is tagged as Airy White Gamut and Log C3 it also has to convert it to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 for our interface monitor. Now if we want to use this conversion what we can do obviously is set this to source to disable any conversion. And as you can see now if I enable and disable the lookup table this is the effect of the lookup table. It looks a little bit different than LiveFX's transform because the lookup table has uh, tone mapping included. All right. However, just turning off color management might not be the most elegant solution. Let's leave this to Rec 709. What we should do instead is change our flags on the source clip because with the lookup table loaded onto the source clip, effectively this clip is not in log C space anymore, right? So let's tell it that with the lookup table applied, it is actually already in Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. And now when LiveFX compares the tags of the clip with the tags of the display, it realizes they are the same and no transform is necessary anymore. All right? Okay, next example. Um, let's open up our layer stack and uh, remove the lookup table. Now we're looking at a log image. Instead of a lookup table, uh, you can of course also use our color space converter plugin here. If I apply that to a layer and tell it to please go from Airy White Gamma 3 to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, in this case I need to disable the alpha channel here in the fill mod menu, I will get the exact same transform. And same as before, I need to tag the shot now as Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 because with the uh, color space converter plugin loaded onto it, it effectively is in Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. And of course, just to be complete, um, you can also do the same with the Open Color IO plugin that we have here. If I apply that on a layer and tell it, hey, I want you to go from uh, Array Lock C, here we go, to Rec 709 using ACES tone mapping. 
here we go. I can do that just like this. And now it is in Rec 709, flagged accordingly, and uh, going straight to the display. Okay, um, there's one more way to do color space transforms on a shot. So let me delete this. If we look at the node tree, we have our QuickTime file reader node here. If I select that, you can see it's a QuickTime file reader node that gives me these options to decode the QuickTime file. And if I now nest this shot, let's first go back to the media menu maybe and flag this shot as arrow white gamut 3 and log C3. And just to be a little bit more straightforward, let's disable color management here for a second. Um, so now we're looking at a log shot. And now what I'm going to do is nest the shot. Nesting basically just adds another node on top where the output of our QuickTime node is being fed into a new serial nest node. And this nest node I can set to be in Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. And as you can see, the Apply button is disabled. Once I enable it, LiveFX will do a transform from one node to the other. It'll look at this node, see, hey, it's white gamut 3, log C3, and it'll compare to the uh, color space and transfer function of this node, which is Rec 709 gamma 2.4. And they would remain just simple flags unless the apply button here is enabled. That will then trigger an actual transform. Okay, here's the second uh, portion of where the um, color management on off button comes into play, which is the default state of the apply button here. As you saw earlier, let me delete the nest node again. Once I nest the clip, um, the apply button is disabled by default. Let me delete that again. Close project, project settings, enable color management, hit OK, enter the project, live effects, here we go. Different clip, this one. If I now nest this clip, the apply button is enabled by default. Um, and again, um, if I leave it enabled, close my project, disable color management, enter back in, you will find that the apply button is still enabled. Like I said, the project settings just set defaults. They will never change anything that already exists and has been specifically explicitly configured. All right, so uh, let's move on from uh, the clip, which is still set to every white gamut 3 and log C3 to look at the stage lights. Any fixture in here, this one for instance, um, can also be tagged with a color space here in the color transform uh, tab. I could tell it that, hey, this fixture is in Rec 2020 and uh, maybe scene linear. Oops, sorry, scene linear, right? And now uh, LiveFX will do the exact same thing as it did before with the displays. It will check the clips, color space and transfer function tags and compare them to the uh, color space tags of the fixture and do a transform from one to the other. Alternatively, you can leave these to source and also load a 3D lookup table onto the fixtures or punch in your own custom RGB matrix. Okay, last uh, corner point of color management, file rendering. And for that, I have to switch to our finishing tool set, which you only get in LiveFX Studio. Um, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's quickly take a look at that. So here's our clip, and it is accordingly flagged as Airy White Gamut 3 and Airy Loxy 3. The other clip that I happen to have here is flagged as Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Now let's go to the render tab. In here, we have the main output node. This node represents our timeline in terms of resolution, aspect, frame rate, and also color space. And here again, as you can see by default, the apply button was disabled um, because color management was turned off at the time uh, where we created this timeline. Now, I can tell it that, uh, let's say, I want to go to Rex 2020 and PQ and apply this uh, transform. What now happens is that upon rendering this node to 16-bit uh, OpenXR right now, LiveFX will look at each individual clip, see that this one is in Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, and it will transform it to Rec 2020 PQ. 
for the next clip that it renders, it will see that it's in Array Wide Gamut 3 and Loxy 3 and convert that to Rec 2020 PQ. So all the shots are being unified into one single color space. And after this note, I can now, for instance, add a ProRes encoder, uh, which will render everything in Rec 2020 PQ to ProRes. Alternatively, uh, since this is also just a simple node tree, I could add a transformer node and from here on out go to, well, let's say um, red white gamut and red log 3G10. Enable the apply button. And now LavaVix will look at this node, see that it's in Rec 2020 PQ and transform everything to red white gamut log 3G10 for this node. And after that node, I can attach my trusted ProRes encoder. All right, um, that is color management in LiveFX in a nutshell. Uh, hope this tutorial was useful to you and see you next time. Bye.